game number one of Night Phoenix versus Boss on Broken Crown. Let's get it started. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. In the bottom left-hand corner of the map, playing the Blue Infernals, it is Night Phoenix. Which must mean in the top right corner of the map, playing the Red Infernals, it is Boss. All right, fantastic. Uh, now, this is our first mirror match of the Aftermath Arena, and it is none other than Infernal versus Infernal, which, in my opinion, is one of the most exciting mirror matches. So, Night Phoenix going for a very quick Iron Vault and Conclave. Looks like they're going to be trying to go for the Speed Camp here. Now, this third Imp... Typically, it, it creates either a meat farm here or a shroud stone at the vision camp. Boss, however, sending a, an imp all the way across the map here. Not quite sure what this tactic is going to be. Actually going to be going for a shroud stone by the Luminite to delay the expansion of Night Phoenix. If this finishes, this would be incredible, but I think it will. I don't think Night Phoenix has any idea that there's a shroud stone going up by his Luminite. That is something else. Okay, that is the first time I've ever seen that in Infernal versus Infernal here. Going to start creeping this camp. Uh, the Brute, however, from Boss coming over, going to try and jump on top of this Gaunt, which does take some damage from the camp so far. Now the Brute starting to focus down these units. If they can get them killed, it will mean that, yep, the Fiend production is going to get started here, which means this Brute might be in a bit of danger. Now in the center of the map... Night Phoenix also going for a Shroud Stone, while Boss goes for a very quick expansion. Okay, Boss does lose that Brute. And it looks like all Night Phoenix lost from that is a couple of Fiends. Maybe just even one Fiend. Okay, Night Phoenix going to start creeping the map. Really getting a solid amount of control. That Shroud Stone in the center tilts the situation so far. Uh, boss, however, not afraid. Not actually going for any Conclave and no Ethereum production at all. So going for a very concerted Luminite effort here. And there is this Shroud Stone that has finished. And it's in range of the Shrine no matter where you put it. Now, does it do enough DPS to actually kill this shrine? That would be crazy. I don't think it does. It does just enough damage to, like, prevent it from going up too far. Night Phoenix, however, going to immediately jump on top of this with so many fiends. We'll take it down very quickly, but quite a funny tactic. I have not seen that so far. Uh, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Love that. And now going to go ahead and take the vision camp here. As they just continue to creep around the map. Only a few workers for Ethereum for Night Phoenix here. And again, only one worker on Ethereum for boss. Double Conclave now going down. Potentially signifying a big Ethereum switch. We'll see. Neither player going for a quick uh, greater shrine. And in fact, Night Phoenix is going to go for a double expansion here, taking the second and the third. The natural and the third, as you might like to say. Okay, boss starting to take down these trees. Night Phoenix just going to be barely missing that scout as he sends his fiends around the map with the speed. The speed buff. Okay. A few Brutes here. Night Phoenix going to try to just slip a Fiend inside of the main. Does manage to do so. Sees no Greater Shrine. Sees Double Conclave. Doesn't feel too worried. Not going to have to worry about a Doombringer coming anytime soon. And in fact, Greater Shrine finished on their side of the map. Only one Conclave, one Iron Vault. Luminite Mining starting to pick up at the natural here. Third base going to go down for boss. 
with a few shroud stones to defend. Okay. Going for shroud stones in the main as well, as the Doombringer is just now moving across the map with what I believe is a full eight gaunts. There could be a few fiends in there. Uh, but I feel like this is a typical, typical thing for the infernal player who has map control. Gonna scout these thirds, make sure there's no quick fourth expansions. And immediately jumping here into the main just before the shroud, fin shroud stone finishes. Boss pulling those workers away very quickly and gonna start picking up these gaunts. Does manage to almost kill one of them. Some of the fell hogs over here, though, do go down, being turned into fiends. One of them might take down another gaunt here. Some quick pickup micro happening as they're trying to jump on top of these gaunts. It's a gaunt versus gaunt battle. That's really how Infernal versus Infernal goes. Whoever has that kind of gaunt tilt, if you will, uh, can really start getting some good damage done. The Doombringer just getting worker pickoffs left and right as they drop between the main. They drop between the natural. There's only Gaunts to really defend here. Shroudstone goes up in the main. A couple of Gaunts will go down as the Fiends and Brutes continue creeping on Night Phoenix's side of the map. Going into more Iron Vaults here. Any sort of tech quite yet a shadow cleft about one fourth of the way done here so magmadon's kind of the king of late game infernal versus infernal a shadow cleft going up here for boss as well night phoenix trying to get some damage done does manage to get a quick pickup and sees the approximate timing of the shadow cleft here one fiend gonna scout out the third sees that there are a healthy number of imps going for theory and production signifying i feel that they have magmadons on the way as well both players happy to sit back and continue macroing as both of them try to go towards their magmadon production now with the doombringer though for night phoenix i almost wonder if we might need to see either a doombringer of boss's own or potentially a twilight to make some shadow flyers because magmadon harass in a doombringer is absolutely insane okay many shroud stones going up here taking advantage that they only cost 25 luminite i mean yeah they cost a worker but who's really counting And a bit of an attack happening here at the third base. Going to start taking down these Shroud Stones. Managing to get some damage done. Now they don't... They, they do actually bounce onto these Imps here. One Magmanon going to move over to the third to try and defend here. Is Night Phoenix paying attention? The Stomp goes out here. Okay, does not have actually the stun upgrade though. So it looks like uh, those Gaunts will escape. And there's still that Fiend from the early game into the main. Love that. Love that. Okay, boss now moving out on the map. Going to start creeping as well. Trying to get some fiends in preparation for potentially a big attack happening over here. Now, both of these players' armies looking very similar. Okay, fourth base is finished up for Night Phoenix and is finished up for boss here. So the economy has kind of flattened out. It's just going to come down, I think, to the next fight here, which is happening a little bit sooner than I thought it was going to. These fiends are all running in here. Okay, they will back away. Oh, he's got to be careful. Magmadons getting dropped. They do activate and they are stunning all of these units. Night Phoenix's gaunts getting jumped on immediately here. Now a Super Shroud Stone does go down. Now the Magmadons for Night Phoenix have not gone yet. The Gaunts, however, getting pulled back. And it looks like a Shroud Infestation happening. I don't know whose that was, but I think that was from Night Phoenix. The Fiends starting to really cascade out here. And a ton of DPS happening as most of these Gaunts have survived. 
It is Magmadon versus Magmadon. Another giant stomp for My Night Phoenix coming out on the back line here, taking so many gaunts out that Magmadon will go down. But some fancy drops happening. Extremely well played here from Night Phoenix, who controls this army like a pro. So many fiends left over. And still a few Magmadons left for Night Phoenix, who is now moving into the third base of Boss. A few of these imps standing at the ready. Do we have any upgrades for them? I don't think we do. A big stomp happening, however. The splits here, only losing those fiends. The gaunt staying alive. And the stomps happening on the side of Night Phoenix. It's just a stompy game. It's a battle of the stompers. This is peak Inferno versus Inferno right here. Gaunts and Magmadons, baby. It looks like Night Phoenix is going to be taking game number one unless Boss has got some sneaky tricks up his sleeve. So many Fell Hogs, though. All of these Fell Hogs are really just temporarily not fiends. If Night Phoenix is able to jump on top of this, turn these Fell Hogs into Fiends, but it looks like going to be going for a two pronged harass. As an attack happens here at the natural, some big stomp happening over there. All of those Fell Hogs turning into Fiends, like I mentioned before, and Boss is going to go ahead and leave the game. As in the main as well, there were some more Magmadon stomping, some Gaunts being dropped as well. All of these Imps and Fell Hogs about to turn into Fiends. Very well played here from Night Phoenix. A very, very fun uh, closure to that game as for a while we got to see some stomps on top of stomps on top of stomps. I don't care who you are. That's some good Stormgate. But a fantastic game one here from Night Phoenix. And let's go ahead in to game number two. Now... My question is going to be, I hope it shows me who's playing because, uh, of course, game one, we had to kind of have a bit of a shuffle. Now, I don't know exactly who hosted this. I can try and see if I have that information. All of these are from Night Phoenix. So let me see real quick here. OK, I don't have that info. We are flying blind, baby. We're doing it live. Okay. No big deal, guys. We're a professional here. And we'll be able to adjust as needed. Okay, gonna pay super close attention. I might actually leave the game once or twice because sometimes it shows you the loading screen and which players are which, and sometimes it doesn't. So let me do that real quick, guys. Just give me a second and see if I can trick it into showing me who is which player. <laughs> Because that would be so helpful for casting this game. Ah, it doesn't look like it's going to do it. I'm going to give it one more try, guys. While we're waiting to start game number two, everybody, make sure you go check out Aftermath on Twitter. Exclamation mark Aftermath in the chat will get you there. And that's going to make sure you don't miss out on any of our future Aftermath arenas or any of the other excellent, excellent events that we're running. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to see exactly which player is which, so I'm going to go off of hoping that Night Phoenix... You know, they both did the GLHF there. I wish only one of them did that, so I'd be able to tell between the two. But we're going to take a 50-50 guess here. And I am going to assume that in the top right corner of the map. Up a game. But taking it now into Jagged Maw. It is Night Phoenix. And in the bottom right corner of the map. Down one game. But hoping to tie it up. And take it to game three. It's boss. Sometimes you just have to commit. Sometimes if you don't know. You just have to commit. 
Uh, Night Phoenix was the first one to GLHF ping in the last game, and they were the first to do so in this game as well. So I'm just, that's my, that's what I'm going with here. And we have an absolute mirror build. Conclave Iron Vault, Conclave Iron Vault happening, and both players going to be going for the sneaky shroud zone at the center of the map. Is it so? Night Phoenix, however, getting a scout, sees that the Shroud Stone is going to go down and actually places their Shroud Stone out of range, but more in range of the speed camp. Two fiends, however, come in across the map and immediately going to start attacking this Shroud Stone. Oh my god, the mind games are absolutely insane. And it dies! Losing the imp and going to lose that Shroud Stone as well. Oh my goodness. This could be a catastrophe here for a Night Phoenix who stopped to creep that first resource camp. Boss immediately going for the speed camp here. Neither player going for a siege camp rush. Um, excuse me, do these players know the meta? Can somebody confirm that they saw that you can just get a siege camp at like minute zero of the game? Hello? Boss, getting the advantage, the fiend count here, immediately going to be going for that iron vault. This is such a crazy fast rush. Already getting a very solid amount of damage done to this iron vault here. He's got to be careful with these gaunts. These fiends do have the speed upgrade. Boss, however, elects to not try to dive onto those units. Just trying to get a lay of the land. Going back to the shroud zone here. In order to get some some sort of anchor. Vision camp now being taken. And I would say that's map control for, for boss right there. Now, in fact, going to be going for the siege camp in the center of the map. Both players kind of doing so. Actually, hold on. It looks like Night Phoenix just clearing out the center. Not actually going to be going for the siege camp of their own. Or have I spoken too soon? No imps being taken. Both of these players committing to one base. Night Phoenix cautiously moving up here. Does get jumped on quite quickly as these fiends surround. And that's going to be Brutes dead. Now manually detonating those Brutes, of course, does not provide an additional fiend summon. But it looks like Boss, he's going to just keep taking this advantage here. A Shroud Stone going down on the low ground will be taken out by these Gaunts and that Brute. Both players siphoning units across the map here. The Shroud Stone just now getting dropped on the side of Night Phoenix. Bosses is already finished. He's going to be able to get this siege camp done first. Night Phoenix has got to do something. He's got to pressure this attack. He can't afford to wait until he can take the siege camp for himself. He's got to know that this siege camp is about to be taken here. He's going to try to go for the siege camp on his own. But I think that might be a bit of a mistake. This catapult is already moving towards his side of the map. The Fiend does scout for him here. Is he just going to try to jump on this catapult immediately? Oh, but he's kind of worked himself into a corner. I don't think this is... Oh my goodness. This looks like kind of a disaster. This catapult starts attacking down the Shroud Stone. Going to take it out basically immediately, but the, the catapult actually leaves. It doesn't have any units to aggro to, so it's going to leave. And I think that's it. I think that's GG. We were right. Oh my god, our 50-50 worked. Night Phoenix, GG's out. As boss takes game number two. Fantastic. What an incredible match with the Shroud Stones in the center. Boss microing around that perfectly. Sending those early two fiends out to straight away dive on that Shroud Stone. Uh, that is a that is a solid understanding of the meta. Very, very well played as boss ties it up now one to one and we go to game number three. Fantastic stuff, guys. Love to see that game three. I think we just jump into it. I think we just go straight away. Do we win a third 50 50 coin toss on which player is which? Am I skilled enough to do it? We're going to find out right here, right now. We're going to hopefully just assume that once again, that in the bottom left corner of the map, GLHFing a little bit sooner. 
It's the Blue Infernal Night Phoenix. And in the top right corner of the map, tying it up one to one in a very solid match on Jagged Maw. It's the Red Infernal player, Boss. Okay, Night Phoenix now going for a quick speed camp attack once again. Can I also send this imp out to attack the trees from behind so that he can go for the resource camp earlier? This map, honestly, quite good, I think. It's, it's a very interesting Infernal versus Infernal matchup. Is he actually going to send it over to this recourse camp and speed camp as well? I think he is. I haven't seen an Infernal player do this, but I kind of love it, to be honest. This imp just has to travel a little bit farther out, but will be able to take down one of these trees. And that's going to be such an advantage there for Night Phoenix if he's able to clear these resource camps. and goes for the Shroud Stone as well over here. Oh my gosh, that's okay. That is interesting. Okay, two fiends immediately going to Night Phoenix's side of the map. We've seen boss do this in every game. I wonder if Night Phoenix expects it. It doesn't look like it so far. Micro's the gaunt forward. Does manage to get two fiends of his own. The, the hog, however, is attacking into that brute as well. Does manage to get the kill on it, but no fiend produced, unfortunately, for Night Phoenix here who loses that Gaunt and that Brute immediately. However, the Fiend difference is quite high. Only one Fiend remaining for Boss, who now begins to creep his side of the map as well, sending an Imp over to do a similar tactic, but do they go for this little trick here? I don't know if they do. Oh, it's not actually a Shroud Stone. I'm sorry, it's a Meat Camp. Okay. All right, then. Are we actually going to use these Fell Hogs? Wait, what are we doing? I guess we are kind of. This is this is uh, crazy. Okay, I, I I have never seen this. I don't know what this meat camp is gonna do really, but it's there. I guess it's just a scouting meat camp, perhaps. Oh, uh, you know what though? I have now that I say that I have seen this in other tournaments where where an infernal versus infernal players will make their meat camps just kind of randomly out on the map though you don't get the double anima for building it on your shroud uh you don't really run the risk of losing uh any of your fell hogs to a doombringer drop and having them turn into fiends and rise against you big attack happening over here from boss immediately jumping on one of those gods gonna take this brute out as well do they manage to get the other two fiends it looks like they will as two more gods and a brute Start moving forward to try to take out this expansion. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Night Phoenix is going to pull back, actually. I thought maybe they would go for an attack here, but it looks like they're going to try and defend the natural here as three Gaunts and a Brute with a handful of Fiends are continuing that attack. So many Fiends out here, however. Needs to be careful. These Gaunts going to get jumped on immediately here. Good target firing from these Gaunts as well. Uh, from the from the Gaunts of Night Phoenix, turning both of those into Fiends. That Fiend number just getting higher and higher for Night Phoenix's boss. Just now starting to expand to the natural here. Going to throw a Shroud Stone down as well. By the looks of it. Yeah, and this is the issue. These, these Fell Hogs in the main here. If Night Phoenix decides to drop onto boss, uh, that is going to be kind of a disaster. These Fell Hogs quickly turning into Fiends. Night Phoenix gonna go ahead for a health camp. That's like the first health camp I've seen killed this game, which is crazy since we already just casted an Infernal versus Vanguard. I keep thinking there's something over here, but it's just this meat camp. Health camp quickly healing up his brutes. Both players now content to kind of stay on two bases. The Greater Shrine finished up here. And once again, we're going to move these Gaunts to the other side of the map. No Shroud Stone. Sorry, apologies. One Shroud Stone down here for Boss, whose Greater Shrine just now going to finish up here. He's got to be careful, though. 
as if he's able to get on top of these fell hogs and quickly kill them turning them into fiends uh could be a bit disastrous now night phoenix does have this vision camp so he's gonna fly straight away into the main gonna drop his gaunts off of the shroud immediately pulling the imps away gonna kill one of the imps here as a super shroud stone oh just barely manages to not kill that second imp there now the fell hogs this is the problem they want to aggro over. They want to defend the base, but truly, they're just traitors to the Infernals. Okay, two guns coming out here for Boss, who is now dropping on this side of the map. Night Phoenix, though, dropping the Super Shroud Stone, manages to take out one of the guns. The Fiend's moving into the main. Okay, and they're just going to go to the third here, which is currently under production, so we will be able to get some damage done onto this base. Will they be able to kill it? I don't think so. As now the fiends and brutes move to defend. Jumping on top of these brutes immediately here. Gonna try and get those gaunts. Not able to do so. Just gonna go for a pickup. As now more gaunts, more brutes start streaming across the map. Both players trying to see if they can keep that aggression going. Where is the Doombringer from Night Phoenix? I don't know where that unit is. There it is. Okay. Missed it. Okay. And it's a lot of fiends versus gaunts. Night Phoenix going to go ahead and try and take this attack here. Doombringer does pick up these units. Both of these Doombringers kind of chasing each other in a game of chicken. Both of them now dropping their gaunts. Oh, but boss kind of trickling them out one at a time. Resets the attacks. Microing these units inside of the Doombringer and out of them once again, trying to get the highest amount of value they can. Boss has got to be careful. He's got the gone advantage on Nightbringer's side. Quickly, though. Oh, so close to not losing that Night, that Doombringer. That is a huge loss there. The transport ship for Boss now getting taken out along with the three gaunts that were inside. Night Phoenix sees it's his time to attack. He starts moving across the map here, drops these gaunts in such a forward position, but quickly picks them back up as he sees that there are fiends that are about to surround them. Very solid micro from Night Phoenix here, who is chasing these gaunts down relentlessly. One of them dying inside of the Doombringer. That is fascinating. And this is some fancy looking micro here. Does manage to lose two more gaunts. Difficult to micro those units, guys. But Night Phoenix now. Magmadons are out. One of the Infernals activating the map-wide shroud. I don't know which one it was. Of course, I cannot tell. Okay, and this is a tactic we've seen utilized by Infernals now several times. Where you actually wait until you create a shrine right next to the Ethereum. So that you get the closest return possible. Night Phoenix clearing out some of these trees. Do they decide to try to go for the third? Or sorry, for the center of the map in Secluded Grove? I don't think so. As now the Doombringer going to drive across the map. Bring some doom. To boss's side. Magmadon versus Magmadon once again. Super Shroud Stone does get dropped. Neither side has the upgrade from the shadow cleft this magmadon though about to go down does in fact manage to do so a second magmadon however stomping on top of those fiends taking them all out so quickly meanwhile doombringer on the other side of the map is going to go for this corner pocket here away from the shroud zone never mind dropping right on top of the imps magmadon moves through stunning all of these imps and fell hogs there's so many gaunts as well all of these going to be turning into fiends boss however on this side of the map taking a much better trade hold on a second this magmadon however taking out so many fiends and gaunts in the process it's a disaster on this side of the map the uh, the shroud stone getting dropped as an attack continues to happen the super shroud stone very well positioned from night phoenix and that is going to be gg night phoenix taking the game number three and that will be the series as well gg well played Managing a solid attack on his opponent's side of the map and defending as well. 
a very, very solid looking game. GG Night Phoenix taking our best of three against Boss. Wonderful stuff on Secluded Grove. A very, very interesting tactic killing both of those trees. I've seen one. I've not seen both being taken down before. Fantastic stuff, guys. So that means all that remains of our Aftermath Arena number two is our best of five. Snarkstar versus Myosotis. And we'll bring that to you guys in just a bit. Stay tuned, everyone, for our best of five premiere match. Snarkstar versus Myosotis. <laughs> 